Okay, my friends, this is a treat for me. They're starting to realize that the standard model of physics is wrong as far as the atomic model, and the cosmological model is wrong, too. Let's just start from the beginning. The standard model of cosmology is astonishingly simple in some ways, explained Andriana Nicola of the University of Bonn, who advised Dalal on this project when she was a postdoctoral scholar at Princeton. The model posits or states that the universe is made up of only four basic constituents. Ordinary matter, which are atoms, mostly hydrogen and helium, dark matter, dark energy, and photons. You see that? Astonishingly simple. Well, it's even more simple than that. <laughs> what do you see? Okay, this is just a little quickie about it. Their overall goal, goal was to measure some of the most fundamental properties of the universe, the most basic, basic, tiniest little bits of what makes up the universe. Said this author, Doyle Dalal, first author on one of the papers and a graduate student in astrophysics at Princeton. Now he says, we know that dark energy and dark matter make up 95% of the universe. And that is interesting because I'm going to show you what it is, and I can't disagree with that. So it says they know 95% of the universe is made up of this dark matter, but we understand very little about what they actually are and how they're involved over the history of the universe. And they're talking about clumps of dark matter distort the light and they see this lensing of how the gravity works moving light around this dark matter. That's how they know that it's there and the clumpiness. They found an inconsistency. It, I, it looks to me like they've measured from two different areas and they said it's not as clumpy when you look this way as it is this way by a tiniest, tiniest amount. And that's exactly what they would see, in my opinion. So they say they looked around and and here's what happened. Uh, there was a gap between these two values, very small, but the study confirms the two values. It doesn't appear to be accidental. The other possibilities are these, there's some as yet unrecognized error or mistake in one of these measurements, or the standard model is, is incomplete in some interesting way. Now, here's what they say. We're still being fairly cautious here, said Michael Strauss, chairman of Princeton's Department of Astrophysics Science and one of the leaders in this HSC team. We're not saying that we've just discovered that the modern cosmology is all wrong because, as Rochi has emphasized, the effect that we are measuring is a very subtle one. Yes. Now we think we've done the measurement right and the statistics show that there's only one in 20 chances that it's just due to chance. So there is an error, probably, which is compelling but not completely definitive. Well, I'll show you exactly what's going on and it is definitive. As we in the astronomical as astronomy community come to the same conclusion over multiple experiments, we keep on doing these experiments, perhaps we're finding it is real. And that would indicate that my statements are more than likely real because my statements are obvious and seen and are material. They're going by sort of, you know, an overall look here and there and, and trying to infer what dark matter looks like. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll show you why it looks the way it is. And then I can show you that does, there does seem to be more dark matter than there is the other type of matter. As far as I'm concerned, I don't, I'll show you why I say that. So anyway, that's the, 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 door, the story. Okay, let's see if they at Princeton are true to their word. Listen to what it says. They're, uh, it says hiding and uncovering the data. The idea that some change is needed in the standard cosmic, cosmological model and there is some fundamental piece yet to be discovered is a deliciously enticing one for some scientists. For some, that's right. We are human beings and we do have preferences. That's why we do what we call a blinded analysis. So in other words, they're saying, I'm going to now analyze stuff. You do it. I'm not going to tell you what I see. You tell me, don't tell me. And then at the end, we'll figure out what we saw. So he says, 
we have become self-aware enough to know that we all have biases ourselves, no matter how careful we are, unless we carry out our analysis without allowing ourselves to know the end result. For me, I would love to really find something fundamentally new. I will show you that, my friend. That would be truly exciting. It will be, my friend. But because I am prejudiced in that direction, we want to be very careful not to let that influence any analysis that we do. That's fine. Try to analyze what I'm going to show you. And then let's see if you truly are the scientist that you people claim to be. So far, I have not found that. This guy, his name is Strauss. We're human beings and we have preferences. We call a blind analysis, Strauss said. Let's see if we can get Mr. or Miss Strauss to check out what dark matter really is. So let's look at it. Okay, I have hundreds of videos on this. This is light, which is from a pulsed red laser. Dip, 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 dip. It is forcing its way through the gases and exciting the gases. This is seen with sea moss. Fully understood, everybody agrees now that this is 100% possible. CMOS sees individual photons of light. This is a wave of light. The photon is inside, and here's the photon. That's the photon, exactly there. This black ball, those are dark matter. They're attached to the white matter. That's why we've never seen it. The only way you can get down to see the black matter is down to this light. When you're down to the light, it shows itself on top of the white matter. You see it? There's the black matter right there. You see the size of the balls? There are solid balls. These are solid. These are dark, solid, heavy-duty balls. They never change size. You see them over here? Where did these balls come from? When we started in here, let's come back here, don't forget, this is what they look like when you start. All right? They came down here. This way from the pulse laser. Dust off my screen. There they are here in their neutrino values before they gain enough energy to become a photon. And then when they bang here, they break into the black separates from the white. This is nothing more than light. Light is light. Laser light is nothing more than coherent one color light. All right, it's not supposed to go faster than light. It's not supposed to go slower than light. It's light. It just happens to be that one color because of the, the way it's made from the crystal. This is also green. It's the same light, same particle. No difference whatsoever. There's the dark matter. This is the neutrino flavors of the green as it pumps itself up to becoming the light. Here is the light coming through the Venturi. So don't forget, here it is just a wave. Here it is hitting the venturi, separating the black from the white. Only the white squirts through. It's called an electron shower. And here it is from CERN and Fermi Labs, say, a muon neutrino attached to an electron neutrino, the black attached to the white, turns into a sterile muon and a muon shower. The sterile muon is a black ball, a muon shower. That is exactly what it's supposed to do when it hits a different medium. We caused it to crush itself into itself. Here it has to crush itself into heavy water. We forced it to crush its fields into its own self, creating the showers. So we made energy out of thin air. Now, we saw all this. This is Fermilab. This is an article by Don Lincoln saying that particle and this particle, they see it. They know they're the smallest particles that exist. No clue where they came from because they're smashing huge things together. But they've seen these. They know they're the tiniest things. And here they are right there. We know what they are, but we can see them propagating from light into those two particles. This is the only thing that exists, those two particles. They're saying it's extremely simple. It's simpler than they thought. Now, this is a complete separation, the black completely separated from the white, and still coming in somewhere, that black is here somewhere, it's just laying around to reattach to that white. It came in as a pair over here, they were paired up, a black and a white, 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 Doof. black, 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 can't get through, white, squish, 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 we're squirting that through that Venturi, and we are creating scads, I believe, of raw, raw electricity from a very simple source, the laser. 
supposedly, as far as I could determine, or, or from the research, it shows that we should at least be able to get 200 times more energy back from this reaction. When you, you look at what it shows for electron showers, it's, it's like thousands of times increase from this energy to here. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but even if we could triple it or make, if we can get excess, let's put it this way. Let's just, be, let's just brief it and make it simple. The laser comes through, the black and the white is attached, the black separates, the white squirts through. If that white is the white I think it is, it's going to come down here through that diode, the photodiode. Woo, woo, woo. It's going to bam, 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 because that's what the pulse is. You can regulate the speed of the pulses, the color of the light, the different frequencies of light, whatever. But you're squirting this through this venturi. When the white comes here, and only the white, it comes down right into our batteries. That's all you want in the batteries is the white. You don't want the black. The black is just, it's just weight. The black is the weight. There's no weight to this white. There's no weight whatsoever. It's, it's literally weightless. But boy, it burns like hell. And I can prove that now, and I will right now. Watch this, though. Make sure you understand these are the things I'm talking about. They know that these, these are the particles. We found them, and when they come through, that's the white coming out. That is just stunning amount of white. But it has no, no impact. It's, 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 it's light. It's, it's light. <laughs> it's way something. When I say it's light, it's brilliantly white, and it is very light in weight. There's, there's no weight to it. All right, so don't forget, here's, I, I think I've shown you all I really need to show you. Light before it accelerates. Light when it accelerates and smashes to bits. Those are the bits. This is just shows when you get some black coming through with the white. It pushes the white, see it? It's the carrier boson. They used to call it carrier boson. They keep changing names. But it pushes these white particles in front, which are the um, electron neutrinos. Two of them fit together make what they call a gluon. Two gluons back to back, like bar magnets, make a photon. But every single thing there is, and nothing there isn't, is made of these two particles. And when you get 1830, uh, 1823, I think it's 1823, of these two bits together in a ball, it becomes a proton. And then everything goes up from there. And there is a new atomic model, yes, and that atomic model takes into a whole new account of the electrons, which they missed all the electrons. <laughs> but they don't have any weight, so, so it doesn't make any difference, really. I'll show you how an atomic bomb pushes the electrons first, which are the burners, and the next comes the bangers. And that's why the banger can't squirt through the, the uh, venturi. They're just too big. They're too big. It's like a, like, a, like a bowling ball, just like a bowling ball. And here we got it so tight it can't get through at all. So it's just like squirting it like, like a hose. Poof, 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 poof. You ever see those things they have on people's lawns? That's just it right there. Okay, this is, this is a, a black hole. And everything there is consists of a black core with white around it. We never saw that before. And the only way we could see the black and the white in the experiments I showed you because we're down at the smallest level there is. Otherwise, the black will always be at the center coated by the white. Always. I don't care. As soon as you get enough little blacks, they will always coat the white. But it doesn't get stable until you get up to 1823. 1823, there's some vibration. It goes, boop, I'm solid. I'm a proton now. All right, it's 1823 of these dipoles together, but it'll be coated like an eggshell around the core of the blackness, just exactly like this. And I can prove this because the black will come after the white. When this blows up, an atomic bomb, the first thing that will hit is the white because it's on the outside. Room. Then will come the black right behind it. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, here's Adam Central. All right, and this is the tea house, tea, teapot apple two Q house when they test, tested it to show up the atomic bomb. First thing you're going to see is absolutely brilliant white, and nothing's going to happen other than you're going to see smoke come up. Every single thing there is, the wires in the background, the poles, everything there is will start to fume and destruct, as they say. 
Get ready, here comes the atomic bomb. I'm running at a 25% speed. The first thing you'll see is brilliant white. Then you'll see smoke, watch. Now, oh, it's smoking. Look at the wires and the poles are smoking. Everything's smoking. And now will come the bam. All right, as soon as all the burn is gone, the white is all gone now. Boom, here comes the black. Boom. Now they're going to turn around and come back. See it turn around and come back? The reason is you got void back there. So let's look at it one more time real quick. Here we go. Coming on at you. Everything, all of the air will glow. Everything in the, it's a boom. That's the one that I showed you where the air is all glowing as the wave comes through. Everything burns and then everything goes flying and then everything comes back. That shows you no question whatsoever the white came before Z-Black.